it's day 449 dad's just topping the boiler up with fuel it's nowhere near as hot as it was yesterday thank god i've got a little bit of headache didn't drink enough water yesterday so uh, let's see what we can get done today the new receiver for the chip has finally arrived i think we've waited two months for it you think for two thousand quid they'd have the plug soldered on but no we're gonna have to cut the plug off the old one and solder this one on Merlo's just off to move some muck now for a minute. It's trying to spit with rain and we've still got a little bit of hay left to bail, which is a bit of a pain. Anyway, we'll have to see if it brightens up in a bit. Just submitting the meter reading for the solar panels. That That's like a feeding tariff that we get paid. May was the best May we've ever had for generating electric, whereas April was the worst. Got the new sprocket for the ride on mower. Just have to drill the rivets out the other one and that one bolts on cut the rivets off that one knocked it out and you can see the ball bit there see totally chewed off this is the new one now this one will screw on so line them up into there bolt that on just changing that little sprocket as well at the same time because the other one was chewed up and uh spiked myself with the pick trying to get the little clip out the top and it really hurts because it went in quite deep. It's that long since I took this thing apart. I can't remember where everything goes. <laughs> I think that goes there. Sam's cut the plug off the other one, soldered it all on now. It's done a nice job. So I'm going to wire it into it now, plug it in, screw it in and see if it works. It all seems to be working now with the remote because we've not had it, I think, nearly for three months now because it broke and they couldn't get the parts, which was a bit ridiculous. I don't know whether it's because of the whole COVID thing. Anyway, we then put it all together and find a battery. We've only found a battery. That's now on charge the bigger. So hopefully today we'll be able to step up the production a little bit with the chipper because if something goes in that's a bit misshaped, you want to jump out the digger and rewind it off that screen. You can do it from the cab, lift the rotor up and down for big lumps and different things like that because it's quite, you can basically do a hell of a lot on this remote got all them switches and also you've got the emergency stops so if something goes in big you can hit a button and stop the machine or you can drop the basket like the screen out of it so that it doesn't like chew itself to bits if a piece of metal goes in so we've just been waiting for that for ages a load of carbon and worm food another day another fly tip this the time it's driven in a field of wheat we've got bits of timber, crates, some insulation. I don't know whether people realise it's actually a short for the 3D2 at the moment. So, cheers for that. don't know whether there's any evidence though of where it's come from. But we'll have a route and see. Just checking this field of hay now. It needs basically rowing up. There's no sun today but there's plenty of breeze so if we row it up been down for a bit it'll get some wind through and hopefully we'll bail it this afternoon don't know what that is but it looks big and heavy it's flying over brook house gordon's put the lawn it's huge that plane the size of that go to the lawnmower Just at Bill and Joe's now, and it's just about to come over. Yes. Mo was all back together now. Me and Sam managed to work out between us where everything went. Finger can't bend it after spiking it because it went in really deep. Looks nothing now, but so sore inside. Anyway, I'm gonna put the jump back on now and see if it starts. 45 minutes later, lots of messing about, jump packs, checking the wires, there's no spark, so I don't know what it is. So I think Andy's gonna to have to have a look at it because I've had enough and I'm losing patience. 
This is the strip that they sown the other day with some flowers and um, sweet corn. If you look over there, there's already some wildflowers now in bloom. And obviously we've got the beans and there's a few of these wildflowers here left over from last year. It's really poor ground. There were some drains put in years ago, some sewers, and it's basically just pure clay really. So it's poorly drained, so it must be interesting to see if anything grows in it to be honest, but it's just a waste of a corner otherwise, so we'll see. Anyway, the beans look okay. A little bit of a wet patch there, it's dried up. And the oilseed rapes are pretty much finished flowering now. So that looks not too bad as well. This is the area I sprayed the spray on the other day. That one doesn't look so healthy. It could have even been eaten. They're a bit yellow. A little bit drifted this way. They look a bit frazzled. Whereas the ones that didn't get any spray look fine. So I guess it's not going to be a good idea to put that spray on. You can just see the cleavers slightly yellower. Not as green and lush as the rest. So it obviously does kill cleavers, which we knew, but it's going to have too much of an effect, I think, of the sunflowers. So we won't be able to use it because I think them four are basically dead now. Sweet corn growing well now, about seven inches. I think it's grown about an inch in the last few days. You can see it sort of in the rows. That way. But you've also got a bit of we've also got a bit of weed in here as well. And then the sunflowers next to it. There's a few of them coming up now. Pee with there, whatever. Not too happy that walking the field. So yeah, some of the sunflowers. these will all keep coming through as well at the moment there's some various different levels some just just poking through like to that one some a bit bigger a bit bigger there got a low loader on just gonna go get some bales of hay in from a field that we're baling and we've got kids in the field next to going up and down the spud drills on motorbikes so we'll see if we can catch them or at least get through the, the bales and set fire to them Just got here as the bale is finished. The motorbike that was going up and down the spud drills over there has now disappeared. It was a red one. And on the way, there was a green and yellow one wheeling up and down the road past the primary school. And I was so tempted to just kind of like go full lock, block the road with the tractor and the trailer, and force them into the hedge, and then they'd fall off and the police could arrest them. But there was too many people watching, so I thought better not do that. But um, they're just a blight. Wouldn't the world be a better place if you got like a thousand pounds for every jab you knocked off a crosser or a motorbike on the road? So, you know, so because obviously they've got no insurance and no number plates and normally got no helmets as well. Well, if you knocked them off, then they wouldn't do it, would they? Because if they thought they got every time they went out there, everyone was going to try and knock them off, they'd soon give up. And then um, you get a thousand pound reward and your car fix maybe, or if you're in a tractor, it wouldn't do any damage anyway. I think it'd be like a really good government scheme to sort of reduce crime and uh, stop people getting run over by these idiots. Just found this, it's a piece of bark that's fell off a log and it's dried and curled itself up. It's like a little, uh, I don't know, hedgehog house or something now. Came off that log. Now it's like that big. I just thought it looked pretty cool, so I thought I'd show you. Today's quiz, sorry, yesterday's quiz question was about what's your, your top three favorite smells. Loads of people saying coffee, loads of people saying cut grass, a lot of people saying caramel, and I kind of get that because you can sort of like smell the nutrition in it. Um, lots of people saying petrol as well, so everyone that watches some is um, sort of a petrol head, I would say. But what I should have said was, what's your worst smell? I'd say mine's probably um, bin juice, so the bottom of the bin, or grain when it's gone rotten in the bottom of the grain dryer which doesn't really happen to us anymore because the dryer lives inside but when the grain dryers used to live outside and you get water in the bottom you get like wheat or barley fermented and it, it was horrible and you'd have to clean it out with your hands and your hands would sink of it it's just mm. so yeah what's your what's your, your worst smell that's pretty much it for today don't forget you can subscribe over here and like uh, watch another video there got an outro from dan bell as well that i'm going to put on now don't forget, if you've got any outros, send them on Instagram, agri-contract on Instagram and on Twitter, or, or even you find me on Facebook, whichever. Send some outros, we'll stick them on. Not had many for a while, but I've got one today. So, see what tomorrow brings, and I'll see you, to, see you then.